Straight Talk from Israel. You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio. Hi everyone, this is Orly Benny Davis and this is from Jerusalem with Love. Today is April 29, 2020 and it is Israel Independence Day. Many challenges Israeli face in the last 72 years. Years of glory, of battle for freedom, years of comfort to the Jewish people all around the world. The but, you know, the base of knowledge and, um, you know, incredible, incredible uh, inspiration to a lot of things. A place that when holy become a part of the human spirit. 72 years of pride and courage, years that inform the world that we are here to stay. And it work, and our work is to make sure that we are the light upon the nations. Israel's celebration this year is in the sign of the coronavirus that create a geographic distance, but not, uh, you know, far is not, doesn't mean that the heart is far. Everybody is strong and more than ever. And together we celebrated and we are celebrating a day of uh, incredible uh, friendship, uh, togetherness with uh, many minority, many people work together um, to fight the coronavirus, medics that come from all uh, stream of uh, the Jewish land, uh, Arabs and Jews and uh, Christian. It's an amazing state. Uh, it seems like peace will come soon because if we keep it, keep up this pace, we'll show the world what we can do and what we're together and for here to stay, that's for sure. Now, in the next segment, we are going to have an incredible uh, guest. We're going to talk with my friends from Italy, uh, Michael Sierra, that will be here to talk with us about uh, uh, the jury in Italy and how they uh, feel in this uh, under the coronavirus. And we hope that we'll get some perspective to what uh, is going to come next. So uh, stay put. It's going to be incredible time. We're going to salute all the people from all around the world uh, in the next segment. So. We'll talk to you after the break. Israel is located in one of the most volatile areas in the world. Israel is an island of stability and a sea of war and unrest. In the midst of this turmoil, Israel stands out as a beacon of order and human progress. Each week we update you on what's happening in this, the Jewish state, a true light unto the nations. This is Jay Shapiro. Join me every Thursday on Israel News Talk Radio. Biblical. Be beautiful. Wear your crown. Wrapping is my crown. Do what married Jewish women have been doing for thousands of years. Celebrate the art of head wrapping. I'm Andrea Grinberg from Rapunzel.com. We have beautiful scarves, stunning accessories, scarves for faith, scarves for healing, and scarves for fun. Rapunzel.com. That's Rapunzel with a W. Or click on our banner on the Israel News Talk radio homepage. Rapunzel.com. Beautiful scarves, stunning accessories, paired with tutorials, support, and a vibrant community to give you everything you need to start and perfect your head covering journey. Don't forget, join the Rapunzel community group on Facebook to see, learn, and share your beautiful wraps. That's Rapunzel with a W on Facebook. I love Rapunzel. I love Rapunzel. I love Rapunzel. Get 10% off your purchase with promo code RADIO. Go now to Rapunzel.com.
And we are back. This is Orly Benny Davis, and this is From Jerusalem with Love. We want to welcome all our friends from around the world, from the United States, from Israel, Canada, United Kingdom, Argentina, Australia, Germany, Switzerland, Belgium. Welcome to the show. It's so good to have our friends all over listening because we are here for you and we love you and we hope that you can celebrate with us this incredible uh, 72 anniversary of the State of Israel. And today we have a special guest, the honor, a friend and a guy that is, uh, you know, a voice that I want to keep uh, in your memory always because he's going to be an incredible force of um, the Jewish people. People in the world. Michael Sierra, welcome to the Jazz Show. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Orly. Hi, you darling. Chak Sameach. It's so good to have you on this incredible day of celebration. You serve on the Jewish Italian Council in Israel and you're doing a tremendous job. And uh, as person that come from Italy, I want you to I want to ask you, how is things in Italy these days with under the coronavirus for the Jewish people? Yeah, so first, thank you, Orly, for inviting me. And uh, Italy is passing uh, difficult times. Uh, it's among the countries that suffer the most from uh, coronavirus, and there is a complete lockdown in the country, and uh, that, of course, affects the economy. Uh, Italians have been under this lockdown for more than uh, seven weeks, and the uh, coronavirus cases passes uh, 200,000 since uh, the start of uh, the outbreak. Mm -hmm. um, the latest news are that uh, from Monday, uh, Italians will have uh, more freedom in moving around their uh, regions, and uh, they can visit uh, each other from Monday. But uh, that's because Italian Prime Minister Giuseppe Conte uh, outlined that uh, the country is planned for uh, phase two of lifting um, its lockdown, and uh, the new rules uh, will see. Uh, the following restriction listed, uh, that uh, people will be allowed to move around their own regions, but uh, not between different regions. Uh, funerals uh, will resume, but uh, with a maximum of uh, 15 people attending, and uh, Italy will be carried out uh, outdoors. Uh, individual athletes can resume training, and people will be allowed to, to do sport. Uh, sport teams will be able to hold uh, group training from uh, May 18 and uh, others. Uh, what about the businesses? Are they going to open the businesses? Because the Jewish people, you know, the, what they worry them so much is uh, the business se sector. Yes, yeah. exactly. Um, the Italian uh, Jewish communities uh, and their uh, business uh, suffer a lot uh, as all Italian citizens, uh, one of the problems is that uh, the Jewish communities have a lot of uh, fin uh, financial problems. Uh, their incomes uh, come mainly from a uh, rental of houses that are part of the community's uh, property. Also, a lot of people were fired and uh, uh, lost uh, their jobs, so uh, the donations to the communities are much less uh, that be than before the crisis. There were a lot, uh, there were a lot of families without food, and during Passover, the communities had the difficulties assisting all people uh, that uh, can't afford kosher meat, etc. And, now, uh, tell me, tell say, me. So, yes, uh, uh, Michael, so because of this incredible uh, economical situation, is there is any um, prediction about people that will come and make Aliyah? Because in Israel, it's not uh, so hard and uh, they can uh, start uh, living a different kind of life here. Because, you know, waiting for until the end of it, you never know how long it takes. Uh, we are feeling that is uh, starting to end. You know, we are in the the edge of it. It's going to end soon. Now, question. Uh, any aliyah that is predicted as far as the Jewish people go? Uh, yeah, that's an interesting uh, question, Oli. Um, I don't uh, think that the coronavirus will affect somehow the decision of families to do or not to do aliyah. But uh, I must say uh, something that was uh, hard uh, for me as an Israeli to see is that uh, during the first days of the coronavirus outbreak, uh, only Israeli Jews 
uh, were allowed to come to Israel, uh, or Jews that had relatives here. Um, I believe that uh, this policy is wrong, uh, but uh, still, uh, I think that uh, uh, a lot of families will uh, decide to do Aliyah in the future. Uh, a lot, of course, there are a lot of uh, factors that uh, affect. The you know, uh, and, uh, listen, uh, my, my, Michael, they can become Israeli citizen because they are Jewish. If they decide to become a Jewish, uh, you know, uh, to come make Aliyah, they can have a passport and all of them can come. But they choose to not to have it. That's why uh, the restri uh, restriction. Uh, Israeli government had, you know, I had a restriction because they need to be in quarantine for two weeks after yeah, arriving to Israel. So <clears throat> they couldn't come as tourists and uh, tourism, you know, they locked down all the hotels. So there weren't any any hotels open just for the coronavirus uh, people. So uh, yeah. I, I understand, I understand the difficulty. That's why I'm saying if they make Aliyah, they can c come over, they can get the Israeli passport and make uh, make a, a new life here. They, they shouldn't suffer, by all means. Yeah, you're right, Orly. I, I think you're right in, in this point. Uh, you must consider, Orly, that the, the Jewish community in Italy is the most ancient community in the diaspora existing from uh, classical times. So uh, uh, the Jewish community in Rome is the oldest continuous Jewish communities in the world, and it's known more certainly that the, an embassy was sent by Simon Maccabeus to Rome in 139 uh, BC to make an alliance with the Romans against the Hellenistic Kingdom. So people are very connected with their history as Jews, but also as uh, Italians, and uh, it is inevitable that uh, not all uh, the Jews will uh, come to Israel. Uh, I think it's uh, also an uh, indiv individual decision that uh, we must respect. Uh, we should support uh, those that uh, decide to come and those that uh, decide to stay as well. Uh, but uh, I, 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 I understand. That, uh, I understand that they have the connection, and we always say that the first Roman was a Jew. That's a famous thing that we say a Roma. But the, the the idea is that if you have no job, uh, many people know for all over the ages that when you don't have work. You move elsewhere, and we are here uh, in open arms. We're opening uh, doors to everybody who wants to come to the land of Israel. Uh, it doesn't mean that you have to stay forever, but at least you can get a break from your from the life that they have there and come and make a new beginning and maybe you know go back in a different time if they feel like it. But but you know. Being a Jew, Jewish person, it doesn't mean that you are, you know, you, you can just uh, practice practice religion. You cannot practice Judaism in, in, in Italy the way you should. And you know that, and you can understand that perfectly. Yeah, you're completely right, yeah. Uh, what about the yeah. anti-Semitism that is rising? Do you say do you, anything in, in Italy that's happening as far as anti-Semitism goes? Well, uh, of course, anti-Semitism is a factor, uh, not as in France, but uh, much less. But still, uh, there were anti-Semitic uh, cases in Italy as well. Uh, one of them was uh, the anti-Semitic kind of Frank stickers at the uh, soccer stadium uh, two years ago. From time to time, we see also graffitis and anti-Semitic uh, announcements uh, from uh, ministers or politicians but uh, not as much as in other parts of Europe. Yes. Uh, there are also people that are afraid from going with the kippah on the street, but uh, I believe that people uh, don't do aliyah because of anti-Semitism. Uh, they do aliyah because they want to be Israelis, and uh, as you say, to contribute to the state of Israel and also because of uh, economical reasons. Right uh, the now, of the Italian economy <clears throat> on the next month will be an interesting case study, and uh, I believe that uh, we we'll see much more families that will decide to come to Israel. And we we are counting on you, Michael, for you to be one of those voices that welcome them. We'll do anything in our power 
to make sure that we accommodate them in a different, get them whatever they need. I know that uh, there are a lot of restriction, but I just want for the record say that uh, Italy and Israel uh, are friends. You know, it's not a situation like uh, all uh, from different country of Europe. Israel, you know, the state, the government of Italy gave the Jewish people a letter of um, friendship in 2008 from the Berlusconi government, and they actually gave it to me in New York, and they promised to become a friend. And since then, they, they Italy and Israel collaboration uh, is uh, strong and is friendly, and we love Italy so much and we bless them and we want them to succeed and we want them maybe the Italian Jew that can come up who can be much um, a stronger alliance to, to the Italian government to help them uh, whatever they need because Italy also is a strong power in Europe and you must understand Europe uh, is uh, in stagnation for a long time. So I'm counting on you and I hope that uh, you, you will be a voice to tell them, hey, come for a few months and just or for a few years and we'll see from there. Listen, we are running yeah. out of time. Last, uh, last words. Uh, okay, I just want to say something for the listeners at uh, home that uh, it's happening uh, just in the last days that uh, there is a wonderful group of uh, Shlichim from uh, the Nea Kiva movement and uh, they made an online crowd, uh, crowdfunding campaign in order to support the Italian Jewish communities in this uh, difficult time and uh, you can find their campaign online and uh, Beautiful. The Italian Jewish communities and that's really We're that. out of time. Michael, Reactiva, bless you. Thank you so much. Happy, happy the anniversary. The Tamar Yona Show. Tamar? She's sassy. She's smart. She's funny. But she's also a real Jewish mother. Hi, everybody. I'm Tamar Yona. And yes, I can be all of those things. But at Israel News Talk Radio, I'm here to bring you the news stories and guests that you may not hear anywhere else. Join me live on air Sundays, Mondays, and Tuesdays for the most unique and bold talk radio in Israel. The Tamar Yona Show. And we are back. It's Orly Benny Davis, and this is from Jerusalem. We love Israeli Independence Days. Uh, we have um, we're, we're trying to get a friend uh, and um, Lamb from uh, America to talk to us, but uh, it's uh, amazing. Um, we're, we're trying, but the line is not. Uh, maybe Kalman will try again and see if she can come on because uh, she's a very um, because she's a very interesting person, she she came to Israel uh, to teach English, and then she left uh, because of the coronavirus, and uh, you know, and she's there. I'm sure she miss it. Anyway, um, Kalman will try again if we can get her. That will be grand. Um, the idea is that uh, people all around the world right now are stagnating in the economic situation. And uh, we find ourselves uh, using all our resources. Now, I want to tell you guys that um, from a person that uh, knows what is it to transfer or to move and to be between, that uh, everything is going to be okay. You are going to overcome it. It's not easy to, to see it when it's happening. But you do have to trust, and your faith is the most important thing to keep. Your faith is the one force that no one can take away from you. Hope is amazing uh, thing and is power. It is a wonderful, wonderful uh, forces that get you to be creative get you to be uh, close to God, and even listen to your gut instincts. You know, people don't realize that uh, when we go and we walk, 
we have our spirit is the connection with God. You know, that's why our spirit is uh, asleep when we are asleep. It means that he's going to rest with all almighty. Um, we, we are trying to get Anne on the phone and we cannot uh, get her hand, sweetheart. If you want to call in, please do, but um, yeah, we cannot catch you. Anyway, the idea is important to for the believers to empower those that don't understand it. Love uh, of humanity starts uh, with an emotion. People say, how can you describe love? You cannot describe love, at least uh, if you don't feel it, right? That's how faith goes. Faith is an emotion that you can feel within you, but you must um, you must respect it and not negate it. Many people that's the fight that uh, you know the secular try to do, and the people of um, different um, understanding of scientific where, when you know doctors and all uh, bless their heart they are fighting like tigers for our life uh, everywhere and we respect them but many people forget and the good doctors always say you know we do our best and god does the rest god is present in all our uh, our hearts and if you feel feel it you can listen to it but how what what does it happen what happens usually you feel you you have this voice in you that tells you something and most of the time you just dismay it you negate it you say okay no you know i will do something else no that's voice that voice you have to listen to your gut feeling that will tell you the right thing and you must understand that he it uh, it's not just um the, the belief that you overcome it it's because you're special you come to this world for a purpose and if uh, god put you through something it's amazing test that you are supposed to overcome and sometime in the test is that moment of faith, the leap of faith that will create you. Uh, it's not a leap, actually. Faith is uh, is a walk. You you walk with it. You know, you don't need to, to jump into it. You, you know, it's not like you're jumping off the cliff. Oh, well, I'll trust in God and that's it. You have to do your best. But you have to listen. Because sometimes, um, at the way I see it, the world, the world that stops still, you know, it was you know god's doing because if not why the world will stop if if everything all the in the creation was wonderful nothing would stop we were rushed like crazy we'll run after the money we'll do we negate uh, or neglect uh, everything else you know it's like we run ourselves nuts and this incredible corona time just remind us how important is the family and how beautiful uh, is to be with the kids and how connected we are with our neighbors and uh, our people and how we respect you know the the police the, the the law enforcement that do hard work and i'm not talking about those people that rebel because listen you can make anarchy any time of the day if you want to if if you decide to break all the rules it's easy but do you do you want to break the rules that uh, actually sustain your your safety net? That safety net that they provide for you, you know, to keep your freedom. Um, because if they let the people uh, break the rules in one place and the other, then there are no rules. And they, you know, in the Bible, they say they're going to eat us alive. So please uh, just use your courage to say to yourself, we gonna overcome it. And in Israel um, is, um, is an example more than ever uh, to tell you that we've been through 70 years, 72 years of uh, incredible struggle, the struggle of the state of Israel from the beginning, from the moment that they announce in the United Nation. And this is the opportunity for the first time, I think, that uh, United Nation in 1947 did the right thing. She actually um, um, elect to recognize the state of Israel. 
and it was uh, a momentum worthy of its existence because uh, creating um, the Jewish state back to uh, to the place where it belongs to the Holy Land uh, just give uh, us all an understanding that there is ground rules that we all have to work with and we are supposed as people to teach the world uh, what's the basic um, human humanity rules? Not to, you know to be the teacher. We don't, you know what? We don't want to lecture you. We are not actually. We don't do that so much. Um, they do that in philosophy or in uh, in uh, in science or academia, but in, in in religion they don't lecture you. They they don't. The Jewish faith don't go to you and say you're bad or else. no. The Jewish people say listen. There is a golden rules in the Bible. You can read it yourself. You don't need to have a teacher for that because the 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 world the words in the Bibles are God's written words that you can understand. They come to life. That's it's the the vrai Hashem Chaim. It's the words of God that are alive. And they speak to you. So if you have a moment that you feel that you are not strong enough and you don't really know what's going to happen, uh, try to take the Bible. Even when you cannot fall asleep, try the Bible. You fall asleep until, you know, immediately. That's uh, for sure. But the idea is uh, faith is something that you learn to use. It's a tool. It's like um, it's a muscle that you must flex because uh, it extends sometimes to to the limit. It tests you in so many different ways and makes you understand that you are powerless in front of all the changes. There is amazing celebration out there. I don't know. The music is uh, out there. Um, even the coronavirus, they're trying to entertain the citizen, I guess. Um, but uh, what I want to, you to understand that this, you know, standstill is a per, on purpose probably to give us uh, the chance to take a good look of what we're doing. It's like, come, go back to base, start again, start your family, keep it and make peace with everybody. Peace is a start that, you know, sometimes you, you, want, you won't believe what you can find when you go back to your friend and you say, hey, I'm sorry. And all of a sudden, so many doors open, you know, because that's tikkun olam. That's where you fix what you made bad. And when we go to the to nature right now and we see the fishes in the Sea of Galilee jumping out because the water is uh, flowing and you say nature is happy because we didn't uh, d you know disturb it for so long tells you so much about how much um, of a push we were we were pushing the envelope on nature we were pushing the envelope on on, on reality we we're trying to be extreme, the supermen that uh, we or superwomen we are trying to to create in our world. Our human being that needs some rest, they need some happiness, they need family, love, and understanding. But more of that, they need to walk with God because the spirit is godly. Uh, um, you know, it's like you can have a good body, but if you don't uh, feed the spirit, what will happen? Your spirit needs to be, uh, re uh, you know, reborn every time again. And when you sustain yourself by reading Holy Scripture, uh, you'll feel, it's, you know, it's like philosophy. You'll feel amazed what the King David and King Solomon saw. And you, you will enjoy it too, because they're great stories. So uh, we are done with this segment and we are going to go to a break and we'll be back after this. Are you interested in trans- In a time where feelings have become fact, where rational thought and common sense has disappeared, one man stands above it all. I'm Howie Sobaker, your political hitman. 
Local Hitman airs every Tuesday at 11.59 p.m. North American Time, 7 a.m. Israeli Time, only on Israel News Talk Radio. Are you interested in transforming your life, drawing closer to the Creator, and uncovering the deeper meanings and hidden treasures in the Hebrew Bible? Then join me, Rav Yitzhak Michelson, and me, William Hall, on the Science of Kabbalah, where we are seeking to narrow the gap between what we understand of our physical and spiritual worlds. So make sure to tune in every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Israel Time, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, here on Israel News Talk Radio. And we are back. It's Orly Benny Davis, and this is from Jerusalem with Love. What a great thing to have great friends. Anne Lamb from Pennsylvania. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Orly. Yes, to be it's here. so good to have you. How are you? I'm doing well. I mean, as well as we can be right now, but it's a beautiful day here in Pennsylvania. So that's all we can hope for. Yes, and we celebrate uh, 72 years of the, you know, independence of Israel. And you came and you visited us. What do you think about the state of Israel these days? Well, first of all, a very happy Independence Day to Israel. 72 Thanks. years and counting. It's amazing. Um, and Israel, I mean, wow. <laughs> I spent five months there, and it was just one of the most amazing times of my life. I came there on a cultural exchange. Um, I was there to teach English in the Sheva, of all places, but it's a lovely place. And I had no idea what to expect. But thanks to you, Orly, and to some other amazing people, I soon mm-hmm. found my way, and I was able to explore a lot of the country. And, you know, with time, in such a short amount of time, actually, um, I learned to become comfortable with the uncomfortable, and I just was able to experience the amazing energy of Israel. You know, the fact that it's such a tight-knit and small community in the country and how you can talk to anyone and they'll know someone that you know, you know, like the six degrees of separation. Um, (laughs) And so (laughs) it's, and then I found myself doing that too towards the end. And I was like, wow, this is amazing. Like we don't, we don't have that in the U S and so to be able to feel that incredible energy and how everyone knows each other and everybody's always looking out for each other. I feel truly blessed to have experienced it in such a short time. Oh, we were so happy to have you here, and uh, sorry to see you gone, but uh, I'm sure that you're going to come back. You know, and um, that many people have a misconception about Israel, and you've been in Beersheba for five months. You you saw many uh, different minority and different uh, kind of races, and did you, did you feel that there was like any hostility or anything like uh, th- that they're trying to portray us? As you know, and I know that you are not Jewish, that, that's good for the other people to understand that, you know, I'm not giving you it from a brother or a sister. She's my sister anyway. Uh, I, wa- I want them to understand uh, that because they're trying to give us, you know, like racist country or apartheid. Did you ever felt that? So, like I mentioned, you know, I didn't know much about Israel before I came, and I had my own views, and Israel definitely challenged those, right? And I was sent to a small school in Beersheba, and the school was predominantly Arab and Jewish, so it was kind of like half and half. And, I mean, I witnessed amazing things in the classroom. I mean, my students all interacted with each other. They would talk to each other, say hi to each other. You know, they would work together on projects, and they were all very friendly with each other. And I know that that's such a small little environment that we had, but it was just amazing to see that, you know, two different groups of people all studying the same thing and sharing the same goals. 
Right. And we uh, and we love to study, you know, Israel is, uh, you know, the people of the book. We should uh, use more of that uh, to to mention to the world why we collect so much information, because we 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 are learners and we, that's why we want to improve the world every day again and again. And it's amazing uh, for me uh, to have you here because you are a, te- a testimony. You are a witness to what's happening uh, on the ground for real time without anybody, you know, trying to manipulate it. So thank you for that. And um, do, do, when are you coming back? I hope soon. Um, I've been waiting for travel to open up a little bit. I, I hope to come back this summer, so maybe in June or July, um, but definitely in September. I have a trip already booked. My family was supposed to come and visit me in uh, March, <laughs> and then Corona happened, right, and kind of right. ruined everybody's plans. So they moved their trip to September, so I'll definitely be back in September, but I'm going to try to come back in the summer as soon as it's safe to do so. That's beautiful. Listen, uh, I I really want to bless you. Thank you for coming on this incredible day of uh, a 72 anniversary of the State of Israel. I, I love to have you back in Israel teaching English because... We all need to use some of your knowledge. <laughs> Personally, to me too, I would love to learn more. And um, you know, anytime, just come, come talk to us on the show. That will be awesome. And thank you so much for being such a good friend of the state of Israel and the world in general. God bless you. Well, thank, thank you, you Anna. Thank you so much for having me, Orly. It's always a joy. It's always joy to see to hear you, sunshine. God bless you. All right, guys, we are running out of time, and I have to wrap it up in a few minutes. And I wanted to conclude this show with uh, a few questions to the real world, uh, because uh, we have challenges from all over um, that uh, are in stake right now in the Middle East. I know that we have uh, some uh, showdown in uh, Syria and uh, Iran. Um, you know, the wicked always use the, the lame time to abuse you. And uh, that's that's the title. You know, there is a story about uh, the Egypt, the exit of Egypt. And there is um, people that we call Amalek. Amalek is the one that go on the weakest of all and uh, prey upon them. You know, like scavengers, they go after the weak part because they, they're not courageous enough. So I, I want you all guys to know that we are on watch we know that what's going on and we understand that you're trying to take advantage of the story we're not gonna let it happen so be aware of that and i know that there is a standoff between iranian uh, ships and uh, american um and you know you don't challenge america iranian you can be courageous as you as you want but um, challenging America will be a very bad thing. So I want to uh, enforce my friends from uh, the United States to stay put. And I know that in Afghanistan there was an attack today uh, in Kabul. Um, they, they, they keep on going. You know, it's like they don't have God. They, they see that the world is struggling and they coming after the wicked again. But um, they are only a symptom of the disease because the disease is they reject humanity as they want. They want to manipulate it. Anytime people come and try to use force against you, you know that they're trying to take advantage of you by force. Uh, That's why we have such an incredible bad relationship around the world because people think that they can push their way around. Uh, so more clarity will be great. Uh, more uh, understanding will be uh, good. Uh, we have uh, the same condition in our political life where they want to push us, you know, to uh, maybe a fourth election or they want to abuse the system and uh, make uh, legislation that are not democratic. And forget democratic, as we say, they are not legal. People that uh, understand democracy as a state uh, and, you know, uh, being a lobbyist for many years, I can kindly respect uh, the method of uh, uh, doing in the American um, Congress where they really, really uh, respect uh, the mechanism 
And nobody, like, you know, we have uh, an agreement between Benjamin Netanyahu and Benny Gantz that overruled the uh, Justice Department. How can you reach out to the justice system? You cannot do that. And uh, Benjamin Netanyahu is pushing his, the limit by abusing Benny Gantz. That is, is very... Um, very sensitive man, and I heard that he has a backache, and I hope that he feels well. But uh, he's not; he cannot resist the power of, you know, of the abuse of these people. And you know, you can stay online and uh, talk to people when the chat room, when the people talk, and they they abuse you if you are not uh, pro Bibi Netanyahu. They abuse; they use force. Now, it's not easy to fight and you have to have a heart um, to to fight it or you just go away. But it's a waste of time and Benjamin, Benjamin Netanyahu still has to be um, in court uh, to face the music of his game. I'm telling you, uh, I, I think he wants a fourth election because the way the thing's going... He's saying that he's going to have, uh, f you know, the government ne for next week. God, if he's going to succeed to legislate so uh, basic rules because he wants to change the regulation of the Constitution that we don't exist. We have a base law that uh, will make the Constitution eventually and they want to change them. And they want to change them in the government, you know, by um, vote that they do in Zoom or, you know, on the telephone. Um, not not legal as far as I'm concerned. Definitely not democratic. Abuse of power is something that is, is completely uh, doing every day. And I hope and I wish for the, and bless the state of Israel that we'll have a different kind of um, prime minister to rule with love, with respect that the Jewish people do need and have uh, the right to have. So until the next week, I want to send you all my love, praying for all the ill one to be well and all of you to be safe and all our friends around the world. There will be time you'll visit Israel soon, God willing. All the best and God bless you all. Ciao, ciao. you get the inside news on Israel. At Israel News Talk Radio, we're dedicated to sharing Israel's inside story with the world by providing our listeners with news on Israeli politics, current affairs, and Israeli Jewish culture. The Israel News Talk Radio homepage also provides you, the listener, with useful information at your fingertips with scrolling news headlines, weather, currency exchange, Shabbat candle lighting times, and so much more. Our radio programming is always accessible and on demand. We operate absolutely free of charge for everyone, everywhere. If you love what we do, partner with us now by becoming an Israel News Talk Radio supporter. With your support, you'll be inscribed on our Israel News Talk Radio Wall of Fame. There's nothing like us in the world. Be part of something great. Israel News Talk Radio. Straight talk from Israel. Howdy, this is Rita from League City, Texas, now living in Israel. And though my heart may have belonged to Texas, it now belongs to Israel and all the fantastic show hosts at Israel News Talk Radio. Hi, this is Michael Solomon from Kiryat Arba, Israel. And why do I love listening to Israel News Talk Radio? Because I love listening to the interesting interviews they do and their news reporting that most other media sources don't cover. Hey, this is Nicole Eko from Malmo, Sweden. It gets pretty cold here in Sweden, so I love cuddling up with a warm cup of tea while I listen to Israel News Talk Radio. Hey, everybody, this is Frank Garrett from Tennessee. Me and my dog Buster really love listening to Israel News Talk Radio. <laughs> You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio.
News, opinion, and more. You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio.